The killing of Funke Olakuni, daughter of a Feni Ferry chairman, Pa Ruben Fasaranti, by suspected Fulani headsmen, has once again heightened concerns about attacks by cattle herders. According to the Global Terrorism Index, GTI, Fulani militants were the fourth deadliest terrorist group in 2014, using machine guns to assault and intimidate farmers in different villages. Nearly 1,700 violent deaths have been attributed to Fulani headsmen in attacks carried out between January and September 2018, according to the 2018 Global Terrorism Index. The GTI, which measures the impact of terrorism across the world, estimated in its new report that Fulani herders have killed six times more people than Boko Haram in 2018 alone. The GTI report noted that the escalation is as a result of population growth, desertification and the distribution of arms throughout Nigeria. It also described the conflict as an economic plight which has forced herders to push aggressively into the south to feed their cattle. According to Wikipedia, most headsmen clashes occurred between 2015 and 2018, mostly in the states of the Middle Belt, such as Benue, Kaduna, Nasarawa, Plateau and Taraba. Some of these killings are believed to have been retaliatory. Naturally, a fly animal is a brave person. It's not a scary person, you know, somebody you can intimidate. And they are naturally very intelligent. And they contribute substantially to the development of Nigeria. Their intellectual capacity is very high. So if you take away all these things and you felt that they can do nothing about it and the system continue to maltreat them, they will be killed, there will be no investigation. You assassinate them, there's no investigation. You take away their cows, no security will trace where the cows are. You will move 100, 200 cows of fly animal and go and sell it. Government will not trace those that have taken those cows and sold them out and you leave them vulnerable. Some of them are the ones today that are into this crime and criminality and banditry because they have lost everything. An average fly animal will spend the whole year or the whole month without having cash of 100,000 with him. He's used to surviving with 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Life goes on. Now you take away all those things from him and now he's on the street and somebody recruited him. They went and blocked a road or kidnapped somebody. At a spot, he got 1 million, 10 million, 5 million. What did Jesus do? He will abandon virtually everything he's doing. It applies to every human being. It's, a, it's an issue of common sense. But simply because there's lawlessness, there's lack of capacity to protect Nigerians. You have a country of 201 million being piloted or uh, policed with less than 300,000 policemen. How possible it is? So it's a negligence of the government that led to degeneration of the security, neglected basic uh, institutions that need to be protected. And unless this is being done, and unless we, we, are, we are real about what we want to achieve as a people, as a citizens, you, you cannot get away from this. Banditry in states like Zamfara, Kaduna, Adamawa, Katsina and Nasarawa have also been linked to herdsmen. The Kaduna Abuja Expressway, though police have continued to battle bandits, still records high incidences of abductions by criminals suspected to be herdsmen. Though these sorts of attacks seem to be more prominent in the northern part of Nigeria, the death of Funke Olakuri has exposed the possibility that armed attacks by headsmen are as deadly in the southwest and other parts of Nigeria. It also cannot be ruled out that the president's recently suspended Ruga resettlement program, which had offended many Nigerians, has continued to heighten aversion to the Fulani headsmen. Security expert, retired Captain Johnson Bish, believes resettling Fulanese across Nigeria could further increase criminal activities and terrorism. This is my own opinion. Uh, what will happen is that if we do that, what we have effectively done is instead of having terrorism localized in Nigeria. Right now, terrorism is localized in Nigeria. It's only three states that are, are the, the, the eye of the storm when it comes to terrorism in Nigeria. So if you have this Ruga settlement all over the country right now, it will only be a matter of time before you know, um, terrorist groups like uh, uh, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, or even Boko Haram will be competing for who occupies 
what Ruga settlement. So what will happen is you will see terrorists crawling out of these Ruga settlements strapped in, 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 in improvised explosive devices and blowing up innocent people. Okay, so please let me get this right. You know that most of these people who are going to be settled are Fulani headsmen. Correct. So are you implying that these are terrorists? Now, I'm not saying that the Fulanis are terrorists, but let us be realistic. You know, you see, the, part of the problem we have in this world is trying to be politically correct. Now, while most Muslims are not terrorists, most terrorists, probably 98% of terrorists in the world today, are Muslims. So now when you build this Ruga settlement that are going to be predominantly occupied by Muslims, you are in effect, you know, building, you know, uh, um, uh, a, a sanctuary, you know, for people with the same ideology. And from what I understand, nobody knows who is going to be occupying these settlements, the Nigerian Fulanese or the Malian Fulanese or Chidean Fulanese or Senegalese Fulanese, what kind of ideology, you know, would they be spreading in these uh, Ruga settlements? These concerns have resulted in former President Olusegun Obasanjo reacting. In an open letter to President Muhammad Buhari, Obasanjo warned that Nigeria is on the precipice and dangerously reaching a tipping point where it may no longer be possible to hold danger at bay. Will the president listen? Can this administration solve the problem of insecurity? Have headsmen become the new face of terrorism? As many have warned, this has to be quelled to save Nigeria from disintegrating. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't. The rushes from the civil war was not pretty. An all-out multidimensional war underneath the situation of extreme and excruciating poverty will be devastating.